who he is creating me to be is different from the things that I experienced. So my entire life, I was defining myself based on my wins and losses. Mm -hmm. I was defining myself based on how many girls I can get. I was defining myself based on how I look. I was defining myself based on all these external factors. A lot of factors that I had zero control of. Um, and it got to the point where it's like God's telling me that you can choose to allow these things to define you or you can open yourself up to the truth and you can choose who I say you are, who yeah. I said you were created yeah, to be. Yeah. Um, and I chose, you know, to be a winner. I chose to be what God said I was created to be. Um, and since then, it has truly changed my life, knowing who I am, knowing my identity, discovering my identity and purpose um, in God. And I feel like when you understand that, it translates to how you approach everything in life, from trials and tribulations to everything. It, yes, it, it changes does. everything. Happy, wonderful Wednesday, every single person that is listening to this podcast. You are tuned into another episode of Create with Kendra, a place where you can be inspired, challenged, and changed, y'all. If you hear a little pep in my voice, it's because today marks the one-year anniversary of the show Create with Kendra for one year, y'all. We've been out here doing our thing, and you are a part of that journey and a part of that process for one year, we have been inspiring those with fading hope. For one year, we have been changing lives and perspectives. And for one year, we have been challenging people beyond their comfort zone. Amen. All in the name of Jesus. Come I just, on. I just thank God. I just really do. And before I go any further, this is the space, as we all know, that acknowledges Black creatives, entrepreneur, businessmen, and women for doing what they absolutely do best. And today on the show, we have a special treat. Okay? We have the one, the only, you can't find them nowhere, but in San Diego. There you go, baby. There you go, baby. <laughs> Look, he's getting Shout started out. already. Emmanuel Yeke. He is the founder and CEO of Unassociated, whose known purpose is to preach the word of God. He says, there is nothing more beautiful on the planet than someone coming to Christ. And today we have him on the mic with us. What a privilege and what an honor. Welcome, Emmanuel. Welcome. Thank you. Miss Kendra Smith. I call her Miss Smith. Um, it's, the privilege is all mine, honestly. It's kind of crazy that, like, you know, this hasn't happened already, but I'm thankful and I think that it's very timely. So I'm, I'm very honored to be here today. Yes. Very timely. It was the perfect so. episode for you to come on, and I'm so glad you're here. Um, not only has Emmanuel been featured on this show, but I was scrolling through Instagram this morning and seeing that he was featured in a shout out LA. So oh, yeah. <laughs> he has a whole article. Y'all go check him out there. I'm telling you, this man is making his mark every single place he goes. He may be coming to a town near you, to a city <laughs> near you. So you. welcome again on the show. Um, something that I like to do with my very special guest, everyone that I have on, is to play a little game so listeners can get some cool fun facts about you before we go ahead and get started. So are you ready to play Off the Dome? Yes, I am. I All am right. ready. Let's hop into it. So if you can travel to any past decade, where would you go? Where would you go? Where would you go? Mm. the 90s the 90s i feel like that's like a very basic answer but like why not yeah the 90s i mean i feel like any further back is like just more and more dangerous for black uh, people so yeah, you only yeah, have so many yeah. options you feel me? so i'll take the 90s it looked like it was popping back then you know yeah the 90s and maybe the 80s uh yeah but anything before maybe. that I'm no, good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, second question. What is the best dish that you know how to cook? Don't say no uh, cereal or ice water. God forbid. Uh, <laughs> I would say spaghetti. You know, that's also basic, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I'm actually fairly good at making, like, spaghetti with ground beef. like And, like, I put seasoning and all the salt, the sauce and stuff like uh -huh. that. 
It's really good. I've had a friend that tried my spaghetti and said, this is the best spaghetti I've ever had. So I hold that ever to that account very Ooh. dear to my, yeah. Ooh, no, that's a loaded crazy. statement. I don't know how to cook like a lot of anything else, but you know what I'm saying? That spaghetti, spaghetti be hitting. I could put the mimosas, the samosas in the, uh, <laughs> in the oven too. The fr- yeah. Nice. And my last question to you. Okay. I need you to dig, dig a little deep. What All makes right. you cry? What makes me cry? Yes. Huh. Um. I think those moments. Okay. Well, one time that always makes me cry is when, like, I was I was a camper. Well, I was associated with FCA Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Mm-hmm. It was a camp. Um, I was a camper for three years, and I was a huddle leader for three years, mm-hmm. something like that. So I think six altogether. Every single year. On the 3rd of July, which is like the third day of camp, they have an altar call for oh. all of like the, the the little kid athletes, the high school athletes. Mm-hmm. And every year that I see that, and it would be hundreds of like um, high schoolers giving their life to Christ every year makes oh. me cry. Every single year. Like that is one of the most, it probably is the most beautiful sight that I've ever seen in my eyes when you literally see, because like. They'd be in the Poly Pavilion, like it's at UCLA, oh, okay. and like they would all like come to like the front and all. That. It's just like an ocean of man, like that. To this day, is the most beautiful sight that I've ever seen. Honestly, that's where I gave my life to Christ. Actually, that's crazy. But, wow, yeah. Amen. That was yeah. beautiful. Look, I'm about to cry. <laughs> Let me hold it in. That was beautiful. So, Emmanuel, um, we've known each other for a couple of years. We met in college and uh, we were a part of a ministry on campus called the Black Campus Ministries. And yep. I tell you, you guys, um, meeting Emmanuel was, was such a blessing. This this brother right here is such an incredible Bible teacher and mentor and friend um, and leader. And just seeing him lead in the capacity Um, with men's Bible studies and now into his own company, his own ministry. It's just been so incredible to watch. So, I mean, the evolution, it's, 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 it's still going and it's getting better and better. So Emmanuel, I want you to share with the folks about what unassociated is. How did you come about with the ministry and share, share some things about that with us? Yeah. So unassociated um, I mean, if I were to speak to the me that I was in, in high school or even the me that I was in the beginning of college and tell them that, you know, at this point in my life, I would be, you know, found have founded like a media platform and be doing all this different stuff. I mean, I, I would have thought it was realistic, but I never really saw it as my path. I went to school to be a politician. Like I initially went to UCLA, you know, majored in poli sci and I wanted to be a politician. And then that turned into, you know what, I don't like politics, I'm just going to be a lawyer. And then out of nowhere, there's this night, and it's really a period of time where a lot of, I was just feeling very low. Like, it was just a tribute to a lot of things, especially my insecurities that I had at that time. Um, I was just feeling very low, and it's for the first time in my life where it's like, I normally think relatively highly of myself, even though I was really insecure. Like, you know, I feel like insecure people, like, you can think highly of yourself, but to express that, and to feel like other people think that of you mm. is is the real battle. Yeah. And it got to a point where I've just been in a very dark place. And it was literally um, in February 2018. Um, it was a night then. And I, um, I, I called myself a loser in my head. And, you know, people talk about hearing the voice of God and all that. And, like, you know, I, I didn't hear an audible voice. Uh, some people may say that they hear an audible voice or whatever. But for me, it was a very intrusive thought. Um, and what it told me is that right after I told myself that I was a loser, it told me that I'm a winner. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I didn't think too much about it at the moment. You feel me? I was like, okay, well, thank you, God. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm a child of God. So I know, like, okay, thank you, God. And, um, I went to sleep the next day I woke up, I'm at a men's conference at a church that I was at. And I look up while I'm eating my breakfast and I see a big old banner on the projector and it says, I am a winner. And at that moment I was like, okay, all right, God, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, you got my attention. Like, yeah. so, so what's up? And that began, that began a series of lessons that I would learn 
that was ministered to me by the Holy Spirit and being in my word of God really teaching me that who he has created me to be is different from the things that I experienced. So my entire life, I was defining myself based on my wins and losses. Mm -hmm. I was defining myself based on how many girls I can get. I was defining myself based on how I look. I was defining myself based on all these external factors. A lot of factors that I had zero control of. Um, and it got to the point where it's like God's telling me that you can choose to allow these things to define you or you can open yourself up to the truth and you can choose who I say you are, who yeah. I said you were created yeah, to be. Yeah. Um, and I chose, you know, to be a winner. I chose to be what God said I was created to be. Um, and since then, it has truly changed my life, knowing who I am, knowing my identity, discovering my identity and purpose um, in God. And I feel like when you understand that, it translates to how you approach everything in life, from trials and tribulations to everything. It, yes, it changes it everything. And once that started to change everything for me, I knew that I wanted to spread that. You know what I'm saying? I knew that other people needed to know this stuff. And um, I had the the means to like I got a camera I started interviewing people about their lives and then I started a blog and you know it just ended up coming into what it is now unassociated and um yeah that's beautiful yeah. absolutely beautiful and um just seeing how God gave you the word gave you the means and provisions to start it and you just took off yeah. And it really did take off. Um, so, I mean, Unassociated has so many different moving parts to it. You have the writers that, that, that post blogs, and then you have the different series. And then we have two um, pod, podcast shows. It's just yeah. so many things that's going on with Unassociated. So how did... You bring all these things together with the shows and um, how did that come about? You know, I like that question because it's interesting that like, I feel like if anybody were to look from the outside looking in, they would think that I was like passionate about podcasting or I was passionate about blogging or passionate about creating videos. I'm really not passionate about a lot of things. I'll be honest with you. Like <laughs> I, I'm passionate. What? what I'm very passionate about is legit my relationship with God. Like I'm passionate about the word of God and really, you know, the podcast, the podcast didn't start until a year in to mm. unassociate, yeah. like actually. And that just goes to show that like, I don't know. It's just whenever I get put on to like finding a new way to spread God's word, and that's that's just what I, I do. That's what I latch on to because like, okay, this way works. Like I'm going to latch on to this. Like, okay, podcasts are a thing now, so I'm gonna get on podcasts. Yeah. Or video interviews. I feel like they're really good to show people transparency. I'm gonna get on videos now. Like, mind you, like like I said, I was on track to be a lawyer. Like you feel me? So it's just like all of it was very um just not what I was content creation was never what I was accustomed to, but it became something that I was, that I'm now quite, you know, fancy of because it's a purpose. It, it's, it's a, what does it call it? Like it's a means to an end. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting that you say that. Um, I, I, I support everything that you just said. I, I, amen. Everything that you just said, because um, when you came to me about, you know, being a part of Unassociated and offered me my own show, I just thought it was the most, excuse me, this is not offense. I, I don't mean to be offense. I thought it was the most absurd idea. I thought like, what a far stretch that this guy is going to ask me to be a part of, of this company and have my own show. Like, who does that? Okay. Like, <laughs> who, who does that? Yeah. And, um, but you were really serious about it. And you, you told me, Kendra, you have, you have the word, like you have something to say. That's what you told me. You have something to say to people and people need to hear what you have to say. And the conviction that you had, like, I remember us having the, 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 the conference call about the show, right? I'm like, let's, let me just go have this, have this call. Right. <laughs> and I promise you the Holy Spirit gave you such conviction and passion and encouragement 
simultaneously that just changed my mind to where I was just like, I have no other option but to submit to what God is calling me to do um, and partner with Unassociated. I had no choice because I was so encouraged. I was so convinced to do it, um, but I struggled with actually picking up the equipment. Um, when yeah. it came to my door, I was like, okay, he's he's ready for me to get started. And um, like you said, you're not so crazy about content creating, but in order to, but creating the content is the vehicle yeah. to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. Right. You know, it's yeah. the vehicle to be able to reach people that you can't reach. Yeah. People out in Canada, people in Texas, people in, you know, New Orleans, wherever they are, you know, coast to coast of California. We ain't got no camera. We ain't got no bus ticket. We ain't finna be flying all over the place to hosting revivals and stuff. But we can actually do it through content. And so yeah. learning and to do... In the comfort of our own homes. Right. In the comfort <laughs> of our own homes. So that's really interesting that you said that... Um, so when it comes to an associated content, everything that it produces has a purpose. Right. So how do you prepare for the content? Um, I mean, it's, it's, and it, this is the thing, like it's, it's very interesting running this company because although sure it's a company, but it's a ministry first, mm -hmm. you know, period <laughs> like it's the ministry first so we don't call the shots necessarily you know like we listen we we wait for the shots or like we 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 ask god to show us you know what the next move is you know what i'm saying and like when i get a message like that's that's what it is like it's me spending time with god and i ask god what do you want me to talk about like and god will it's funny because i'll pray to god and i'll say god like what's next like what do you want me to talk about I got a message on the toilet. I was like, God, that's something. I was just praying on my knees. You feel me? Like all of that stuff. And then all of a sudden, like I get up. Bath I and break. The bathroom and that's <laughs> exactly. So it's just, I mean, I think it's interesting because, you know, all of the content is inspired by God and it's for the glory of God and it's for people to see what we're doing. And it like, we just don't want it to stop where it's just like, okay, you know, I watched Church Where Confessions are. Or I watched Create with Kendra or any other thing that we did. We, I read this, but it's like, what you when you read it, it's supposed to inspire you to do more. It's supposed to inspire you to take that next step in your relationship yeah. with God. So everything is inspired by God and everything is made with the intention to get you to take that next step to get closer to him. Yeah. And people oftentimes ask me, like, how do you create your content? And... um I just, I just really appreciate God coming through because he is so faithful. He is so faithful. Like every single week we got, we have to produce something for people to, to consume. And God has just been really giving us revelation and sharing with us what he wants his people to, to, to gather and to grapple with and to be challenged in. And I promise you, like, when people respond like this is the word that I needed or when people come to Christ or yeah. ask, can they get plugged in with ministry um, because they were inspired through this content? Our purpose is it's done. Everything. And yeah, it's everything. And the reason why we move like this is because if we were to do it on our own accord. It it. Yeah it wouldn't serve its purpose. Yeah. Even if we had millions of listeners and millions right. of followers, it would not serve its purpose. Yeah. If people are not coming to Christ, if people are not changing their lives or people are not repenting or just, which means just to simply turn and not do what the former things were, if that isn't happening, what are we doing? You said it, you said it. It's, it's a waste of time. Um, because I mean, like, you know, you can get millions of followers, you can get millions of people listening, but okay, there's going to be another person with millions of followers, millions of people listening that are preaching against what you're preaching, that mm -hmm. are false teachers or that are whatever it might be. So it's just like, 
it's about is what's is what is being said on this platform actually hitting home inside the hearts of people and are they actually accepting it and are they doing something with it because i'll be honest with you like it like i would i think it would be a waste of it would be a waste of time it would be a waste of resources it would be a waste of everything if unassociated words blow up and become global and those souls are being saved mm. then what is it global for what, like so what is what? it global for <laughs> like the purpose the reason why this company was created was started was to draw men to christ mm. and to for people to recognize the relevance the the relevance of the word of god the relevance of of god of jesus christ in their life every single day amen you know if we're going to be global then it's going to be because of that like you feel me and like if it, if if everybody if, if I, that's why like i mean i'm kind of going on a tangent but like like oh, a yeah, lot of people brother. are so <laughs> you know they get to the point where they they have a platform they have people watching them they have people paying attention to them and all they do and all they care about is everything out like outside the will of God they mm -hmm. never point anything back to God like they never they never talk about Jesus Christ in fact they even talk about him less than they did when they first started out because they realize oh not a lot of people may not may want to hear that but we don't understand as human beings when God gives you a platform it's not just for you to be like hey I accomplished this hey I did this where when is the part where we give glory back to God because he put you there for a reason yeah he put you there not just so you can have a good life here on earth. This is not where we're going to spend eternity. We're going to die. We're all going to die. Where are you going to go after that? Like, this is about eternity, you know? So if I'm getting, if if unassociated blows up to a global thing or, or if anybody gets a platform, whatever it might be, like, it means absolutely nothing if it never points back to the Father if it never feeds back into yeah. Jesus Christ died for your sins, except Jesus Christ and repent. Like you feel me? Like, I just see it as a waste of time. Uh, I have to speak to that point. <laughs> Amen to that. And just even in preparation for content, like um, what I know that God does with our shows is that like, for instance, a couple of, I think it was like last week's show um, or like starting two weeks ago, God gave me a word to share with the people about idolatry. And now this was just like a personal Bible study for me. This was something yeah. that I was doing on my own and, in, in, you know, scripture study. God was like, I want you to take this to the show. This is not going to be the fluffy, I'm going to live my best life um episode this isn't going to be the the feel good episode and i can i can conquer the world episode i need you to tell my people to repent i need you to tell them to come back to me because they've been gone and they have been distracted and they have gotten besides themselves and i need you to deliver that message and i'm just like at this point when you are able to listen and discern the, the the voice of God, don't ask no questions. You move. <laughs> you move. And um, I just appreciate, like, even after, like, I don't even think about the consequences because if God be for me, who's going to be against me? Like, Period. see me by my father. Like, he don't play about me. So don't, don't come for me. Um right. But just the whole idea of when God tell, tells me to give a message, even if it's not favorable to the listener, but if it'll yeah. cause you um, to to repent and to turn and to change it up for the for the safety of your soul, then that's the word we're gonna deliver. Even if it's one. Even if it's one. Yeah. F Fifty, a hundred, five hundred people can listen to it and be like this bunk, and one can say. Oh my gosh, God, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Lord, change me, help me, correct me. And that's all that matters. And I encourage for anyone that's listening to this right now, like if God is telling you to go do something or share something with someone that isn't favorable, that isn't popular opinion, do it and don't think about the consequences because those consequences are, are less and they're not greater than God's reward for your obedience. Yeah. And if I can add to that, mm -hmm. 
it doesn't take like the reason why you know you just have to go and you can't think about the consequences is because even after considering them it doesn't change the fact that you have to go so mm. considering them is a waste of time mm. even though the mm. only thing that can come about from you considering them is hesitation or disobedience mm -hmm. that's the only thing when god tells you to do something you're considering the consequence that's the only two things that can come from that you're going to hesitate or you're going to be disobedient that the consequences is going to fear you so is going to make you fear so much that you're going to uh i don't know you're going to be unsure you're going to be uncertain you know and god god can't be pleased by the person that continues to not have faith continues to 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 pull back right mm -hmm. um and also like you know for me it was a lot of times where it's like god would tell me to go but i'm considering like the risk i'm considering all these different things and it's just like i don't i don't want to like i don't want to go because i re recognize that could happen to me but it's just interesting that you know there's that one verse that says like the sufferings that we have of this time cannot even compare to, the glory to what we're going to be revealed later, to the glory that we're going to witness later so mm -hmm. it's just like yeah like you just have to go right like you can't even like just like, okay you feel me and like think about it later like think about it when you're on the other side you feel me and give glory to god that yeah you know, he brought you through like on that's the other you, side like, exactly yes <laughs> keep your eyes and i think of i think of a racehorse when you say that and how on the racehorse mm, they have these right. blinders on and yeah. they can't look to their left nor to their right yeah. but they can only look at what's ahead because when you look at what's to the left and what's to the right you get distracted well what are people going to say they're going to talk bad about me they're not going to you know they're not going to like me mm -hmm. oh uh, whatever <laughs> but god's glory the blessing that he has on the other side is ahead be obedient follow what he is what he's instructed you to do so we have a two very different shows on unassociated we have church boy confessions and we have create with kendra which y'all are listening to now okay um emmanuel what are the unique elements of both of the shows we have it's funny because i feel like <clears throat> our shows are like so similar but so different at the same time yeah and Agreed. i feel like that really just goes to show that like you know i mean there's a reason why god has so many laborers the reason why god has you know called so many people to to spread his word because people do it differently people yeah. bring different things to the table whether it's our backgrounds whether it's um, how we speak, whatever it might be. And it's just funny because when you look at other, other platforms, you know, they're going to have multiple podcasts and they're going to have specifically different topics. Like, and they're, they're not supposed to overlap, but it's just funny because we can overlap. And it's like, if the spirit wants us to overlap, yes, we we're going to overlap yes, and we can preach on the same topic. But I guarantee you, if somebody were listening to mine, then listen to yours, they're going to get things from church boy confessions. Then they're going to get things from create with Kendra because the spirit moves through us, you know? And um, I would say that, you know, I would say, I don't, I think it could be the way that we speak. Like, it's kind of hard for me to point it back. So like we just have a different, like, what, uh, je ne sais quoi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> that's really my favorite word. Um, different X factors. Like, I, I'm, I'm really not good at, like, pointing things out like that, but I, I, I know that there's something different. I know that there's different things that we bring to the table. I really just believe it's just who we are. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what I would say. Like, that's the biggest difference. Yeah. Um, with your show, and I, and I tell you this, when I, when I listen to your show, it just, I just really feel like I'm in the congregation and you are at mm. the pulpit and you're like, look at here. <laughs> we finna get into this word, okay? Yeah, it is good. no sugar. It is savory, okay? You are savory <laughs> in the word of God. It's 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 like a straight shooter type of delivery, and I love it. Um, there is no ambiguity because sometimes people talk ambiguously to kind of. I don't want to say kind of, but to appeal to everyone's needs, wants, and what they want to hear. Um, mm. But when you teach Very the common. Bible, when you teach the Bible, it is what it is. It is the foundation. It's principle. And as people change, the Bible stays the same. And so I just really love it, how you are able to exegete the text and just break it down for folks. Thank you. 
Thank you. Honestly, for me, like when I listen to yours, I feel like I'm getting like tucked in the bed. Like, because I feel like you're just like a soothing mother that's like just feeding me scripture. Like, it's just, oh, okay. I don't know. And I think that maybe that's the biggest difference. Like, you know, where it's like, I feel like the way you deliver is very motherly. And you still, you know, you still gonna call out what needs to be called out. But in the same way, it's just like, when I listen to you, it's like, I'm having a conversation and we're at, you know, the, the dining table and you're yeah. speaking to me. You know what I'm saying? And like, we're having a dialogue, Dude. even though you're the one that's talking, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, we're having a dialogue. And um, I appreciate that every episode, I feel like I'm being welcomed, you know? Amen. Well, amen, <laughs> amen. Um, it is very nice. And it's it's all good and, and roses when y'all get the, the when y'all get the shows and when you listen to the podcast and when y'all scroll through Instagram and see unassociated y'all here doing, you know, you know, doing his thing. Right. But, um, there are some challenges. We know there are some challenges behind the scenes. So Emmanuel, what have, what have you learned from your challenges in this process? Okay. Um, there are many challenges um that i can speak to but i have to say that the most persistent one that i've really had to dealt with and like i mean i'm I'm very hesitant to speak about this because i never want to be perceived as someone who cares so much about popularity and numbers Mm -hmm. but i mean i'm be honest and like whatever like you know this is the whole point about like not thinking about the consequences you just gotta like you just gotta say it um for a very long time, I was so caught up in unassociated needs to blow up, blow up, blow up, blow up, blow up. And to the point where I'd get so anxious and I'd be so disappointed. There were times where it's like, if I didn't get enough uh, <clears throat> likes on a post, if I didn't get enough, whatever the numbers were, like I was just so fixated on the numbers. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It, I was happy when they were up. I was, I was mm-hmm. bad when they were down. It would even be times where I would be hesitant to post certain things that I didn't think it would resonate or whatever it might have been, or I didn't think it would get a lot of engagement, not resonate, get a lot of engagement. Yeah. And, you know, it got to the point where there have been times, well, it really got to the point where I started to, if you will, fantasize about quitting. Mm-hmm. And that's the crazy part. You know what I'm saying? Because even from day one, February 28th, 2019, I had an encounter with God and I wrote it down. I said that God's purpose over my life. It's not about how many people look at it. It's not about how many people notice. It's not about the numbers. It's about me being obedient. It's about me doing the will of God in my life. This is a theocracy. It's not a democracy. This calling that God has on my life. Yeah. But then I go out and like, that's all I'm fixated on numbers, 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 mm-hmm. numbers. And it gets to the point where I realize that my fixation in numbers takes away from my dedication, from my ability to serve God. Especially when I find myself here fantasizing if I should just stop and associate altogether because maybe I didn't get enough likes on the post or maybe I didn't get enough uh, views on a video, whatever it might have been. And it's shameful to me looking back and like seeing that something like that could make me to stop as if that's why I started. You mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? Right. As if it wasn't God that called me to this thing and called me to use my purpose and use an associate as a vehicle for my purpose. How, if I had to come to the point and realize that if I were to stop because of the numbers, right, then that means I'm not stopping because God told me to stop. I'm stopping because of the numbers. I'm stopping because of, um, you know, whatever it might have been. I'm stopping because of money. I'm stopping because of all these different things. And it's just like, that's disobedience. When you cease to do something that God has told you to do, that's disobedience. If God has told you to do something, you do that something and you stop when he tells you to stop, mm-hmm. period. You know, and it really highlighted to me, that challenge really highlighted to me my self-centeredness. And I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit who really started to minister to me and, and and help me to understand my self-centeredness and me thinking that that this was about me, like unassociated was about my success. It was attached to my, you know, win-loss record as a human being. Um, and one one passage that really helped me um, understand that it wasn't about me 
was um, in Joshua, I believe it's Joshua chapter five, something like that. And Joshua, he had just become the leader of the children of Israelites. And he has this encounter because they're just about to go to Jericho. You know what I'm saying? They just entered the land of Canaan. They're about to go to war with all the people in the land of Canaan. And he he has an encounter with what, you know, he says as a man, what the, what the Bible accounts is as a man. And he asks the man, you know, are you for us or are you against us? Are you for us or are you for our enemies, right? And the man turned out to be the captain of the army of Israel. He says, I'm none of those things. I'm not for... I'm none of that. Nay, neither. I'm the captain of the armies of God. That's that's who I am. And what what Joshua did at that moment, he said, "Oh my gosh!" He bowed down to his face and said, "What do you want your servant to do? I'm your servant. What do you want me to do?" Mm-hmm. And the way that translated to me was that, like, yo, like, I'm thinking it's Emmanuel versus success. It's Emmanuel's journey to success. When in reality, this is not about Emmanuel versus anybody. This is not about Emmanuel's journey. I am not the main character of this story. I'm not the main character. I am the vessel. God is the main character. I'm the one that must submit my way to his, and he's going to use me how he wants to use me. And whatever fruits come from that is something that is controlled by him. That is his business. All Emmanuel has to do is be obedient. Emmanuel says go when God says go. He says stop when God says stop. He says slow down when God says slow down. Speed up when God says speed up. That's my business. Everything else is That's not my business. business. <laughs> Period. So I had to understand that and I had to detach my identity from this whole win loss success record, this measuring stick that we all have as a society mm-hmm. and understand that my life, I want to commit my life to being obedient to God and doing what God has called me to do. So sometimes that looks pretty. And sometimes it looks humiliating. You know, sometimes it looks great and you're on a mountaintop and other times you're in the valley. But no matter where it is, I want to be in the will of God. That's what I want to be. And I think that um, that's very important for every single human being to understand. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm just letting that soak in first uh, for a minute, saying that our job and what is our business is to be yeah. obedient to God and to let him take care of the rest. And I yeah. know I struggle with um with not getting I struggle with the hiccups of production. And for me, mm. um there's been so many times to where I've recorded an episode and the, something went wrong with the video or something went wrong with the audio and then just re-recording. And then like, I feel like sometimes production days can be hours, hours and hours, even though, even though yeah. it's like a 30 to 40 minute show. And when I, mm-hmm. when, like my issue is like, when I have a schedule, I want to stick to that schedule. You want it. <laughs> I want to stick to that yeah. schedule and I'm going crazy if I don't. And so there have been so many days of frustration and I'm like, I don't even want to do this. Like, I don't even want to come to the mic, but having to give God my yes, even in difficulties. Yes. Like, I'm having a bad day, but God, I still give you my yes. I don't want to come to this mic because I have an attitude. But I still give God my yes. I feel like I spent hours in writing and production and all this other kind of stuff. And I don't want to do this. Whatever the case is, I like submitting my yes, even when I don't feel like it, is been the challenge. But it's also been the strength in exercising my faith. Because I don't just come here with the answers to give out to the world. I'm also being challenged. I'm also exercising my faith. I also go through things in life, you know, um, life happenings and then still having to come and be on. You know what I'm saying? Um, But still giving God my yes and and being obedient. God sees and hears me. Yeah. And he's never left me. He's been faithful through it all. And um, even what happened yesterday <laughs> with the whole um, video situation, right. we ain't going to talk about it, y'all, because y'all still need to calm <laughs> down. Okay. Um, but this morning when I got to, when I when I woke up, I just, I just thought, you know, I'm not even going to dwell on that. 
Like God gave me a mm. new day of life. <laughs> I'm breathing right now. I woke up, you know, to to no tragedies. God is good. Yeah. Regardless of of what goes on, God is good. God is good. Um, Emmanuel, what has been one of the biggest impacts in this ministry and with this show? Your show, Create with Kendra. Yes. Um, I would say that it, well, in the ministry first, I would say that, you know, the biggest impact is can happen any week. You know, like when anybody hears something, reads something, watches something that ignites them to get mm-hmm. closer to God, that will always be the biggest impact. Um, and that could, you know, like I said, that could happen in any week. On this show, I think that what's been the biggest impact is, you know, what you've brought to the table is um, yourself, honestly. Like, I feel like God has truly put you on this planet to minister his work. I, I do believe that. And I think that the difference that you bring to the table, like we had talked about, has been amazing for this ministry. And it's been amazing for a lot of people's lives. Um and I feel like, I feel like it's just the beginning because it's just interesting because when I could think back to the first day that I had asked you that, like, there was never really a doubt in my mind that you were going to say yes or that, that you that you weren't going to say yes. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just one of those things where it's just like everything was just streamlined and it's just I was just waiting, you know, like, <laughs> and and I think that that really speaks to the fact that, like, you know, God already knew that you were going to do this before I even asked you. And like, um, I'm just thankful that that you're here. You feel me? I feel like there is a lot of especially, you know, black women that tune into this show and like they see you here. Right. Mm-hmm. And they see oh, another woman of God and uh, an amazing representation of a woman. And I've gassed you up about how much of a representation you are, representation you are. And like, I think that when you look out in society, you don't see many men of God or women of God that truly the first thing that they are committed to on this planet is God. Mm-hmm. That's just not what you see anymore. So you being here is not only you ministering the word, your impact is not just by ministering the word, but it's also you being as an example. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's like, I don't know where I got this from. I think it was the Holy Spirit, but it was like, you know, God doesn't need kings and queens anymore. He needs examples. You know what I'm saying? Like, he doesn't need the kings and queens to rule the land and and have everybody walk in the way of the Lord. He needs examples. He needs people that when when they're when they're threatened with life, they could be like, oh, well, well, Kendra said this or Kendra talked about this scripture and so on. What, what, what would, what would, you know, Kendra do? Kendra would rely on the Lord right now. People need examples. And I think that one of the biggest impacts of create with Kendra is you are an amazing example of a woman of God. And you, you, you express that every time that you get behind the mic. And um, yeah, I, I, I truly have very high thoughts of you, Kendra. So just, <laughs> so just, just know that. And um, your impact is something that you've even witnessed yourself. Like I'll, I'll I'll be reading the comments on on YouTube and it's like it's people that are being impacted by you and I'm just thankful that you know this show is is a part of the ministry and I'm excited for because I, I still believe it's just the beginning I still believe that it's it's there's more so I'm excited I'm looking for some tissue um can't find it <laughs> so. Uh... <laughs> Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. I really appreciate those kind words and just being a part of this ministry is a beyond blessing. Um, For me, one of the greatest impacts, there's so many unassociated is just bomb. I I tell you, this is, this is a saucy platform. You know what I'm saying? Um, But what I really love Mm -hmm. and um, something that I'll never forget is you putting on those poetry jams on campus. So um, Emmanuel, when we were, you know, when the world was open, Emmanuel would put on these (laughs) poetry jams, these unassociated poetry jams and allow people, um, 
believers and non-believers to come and to share um, their art, um, but made it very clear that this was a God event. This was going to, going to bring God glory. And um, I remember the last one that, that you put on and we were in this theater and the presence of God permeated the room. And it was so thick and it was such an encounter and it was so beautiful that people that never experienced God had a chance to feel like what it meant and what it felt like to be in his glory. And that, because people, people will not go to church. <clears throat> so what we got to do, we got to bring it to them. Mm -hmm. And when I heard the comments after, after, you know, how there's like a fellowship after, you know, an event, um, people were saying, oh my gosh, I just felt some, I don't even know what it was. And I'm thinking that's the Holy Spirit. Mm, right. That is the Holy Ghost. Okay. But I you've never you, felt. They didn't even know what it didn't, didn't even know what hit them. them. <laughs> when you don't know yeah. what you what, what hit you what and you I'm feel legit, good about like, it. Literally. Oh my gosh. Like that. I was like, that's ministry. Like that's ministry. And um, yeah. even just with the opportunity. Brother this... coming back. Brother coming back. Okay. Wait right. <laughs> to a city over. near I you. I tell you, if this world tries to open before summer, you're going to get a poetry gym in November. I said it today. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Lord willing. Okay. Leaking, leaking some, uh, some information. Have your, have your November ready and available. Wash I'm your hands fine. and bring your mask. The world uh, is open. For real. <laughs> But even within this show, like people commenting, every y'all y'all's comments of encouragement. When when I Everything. when I reply, the reply is not enough. Like my heart is just so filled with joy and and gratitude to God that He's allowed me to minister to you all. Um, every, everything that y'all say, even if this was like, oh, this was, this was great. I needed this. Um, there were two comments in particular that I will never forget. Um, one was by, um, a nine-year-old girl named Maddie and Maddie wrote me, um, ma'am, you are so special and I love you. My name is Maddie and I'm nine years old. And I wanted to just... <laughs> just fall out because I can remember being nine years old and that was the year that I actually came to Christ. And if I had, you know, a create with Kendra to look at, you know, back when I was a kid, like that just would have been, that would have, that would have been a game changer. Um, so having Maddie, shout out to you, Maddie, listening at, as a kid, to content like this is just mind blowing. And another listener wrote me and said, Kendra, this helped me get out of bed this morning. And that was just so, mm. so special to me because people are really struggling. That's heavy, That's heavy right? Yeah. Like people are really struggling with life and, and wanting to live and going throughout their day and, you laying in bed and you listen to a, a message of hope and inspiration that God inspired and used me as a vessel. Cause this ain't really none of me. I mean, I bring my personality, but he brings the word. All glory to God, all glory to God. Glory. So I just, I really appreciate, um, just being here. Definitely. Um, but as we wrap up, I have another, uh, my, my final question to you is where do you see this ministry of unassociated going? Yeah. Um, you know, the vision I have for it, I believe, uh, you know, my, my, my goal is to always have my vision in line with God. And I truly do believe that, you know, we're, we're in the very beginning stages of this company still. Honestly, I'm still figuring out what all this is, to be honest, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, this is, um, I see it being able to translate go globally. I want different languages. I want world tour poetry jams. I want on, people, on. you know, looking to unassociate it. And it's like whenever they feel insecure in their faith, whenever they feel somehow some way they can get in touch with a piece of content somehow some way they can get, get in touch with a, what a product whatever it might be that can minister a message to them that they need to hear 
I see an associate as being that global channel that literally, you know, is there for Christians and there for anybody seeking a, a deeper relationship with God. Like, that's what I see it as. And it's like, particularly for the youth too, because, you know, um, in this new age, like, you know, a lot of people are falling away. A lot of people are going, you know, their separate way. And um, it's sad to see. And I want to, I believe unassociated will be that cultural catalyst in a sense Amen. that, you know, stirs things back up and helps people understand the relevance of God, um, Jesus Christ, the relevance of Jesus Christ in their life and what it means. So that's where I see an associate. You know, God God knows where he's going to take this ministry. All I know is I'm not stopping until he says stop. So okay. right, whatever he wants to do with it is what it's going yeah, to happen. Yeah, because that's his business. So. That's it exactly. That's, That's his business. business. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, when I think of where an associate is gonna go, when when I think of the, the blogs and the merchandise, by the way, y'all go purchase merchandise because it's 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 cute. Okay, it's fabulous and cute. Um mm-hmm. thank you. The the shows <clears throat> um God is going to use it and place us in places that we didn't even think um, yeah. we would ever be. And what comes yeah. to mind is the scripture of Proverbs 16 and 3, commit your works into the Lord and he will establish your plans. Uh, everything that we do, the merch, shows, blogs, vlogs, interviews, whatever, <laughs> um, commit it to God. And he will establish your plans and anything that God establishes, no man, no woman, no demon in hell can uproot because it's been established by the rock, by the anchor, by the source. And I'm just incredibly proud of you, Emmanuel, because of your of your intentions and your mindset when it comes to this company, that this is God's, that you're the vessel, that you're the servant, that you're the vehicle. Um, and your commitment to God's work is impeccable. It's mind blowing. It's encouraging. And it is also the example that the world needs. It definitely is. So um, as we close, my good brother, is there any advice, any last words you would like to share with the people? Yes. Um, Kind of going back to the topic of, you know, each of us, recognizing that we had to be obedient and remain faithful to what God has called us to, even though, you know, there were going to be inconveniences attached to it. Um, I just want anybody to know that, you know, being called to be used by God does not mean that you don't ever face inconvenience. In fact, that would probably mean that you are more guaranteed to face inconveniences. Um, Jesus himself faced this, you know, like the, the, the spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. Um, but it's important that your spirit remains willing. It's important that you remain faithful. It's important that you remain obedient because those bumps in the road, they will come. Um, some losses will come. Um, some trials and tribulations will come. A whole bunch of things to make you hesitate, a whole bunch of things to tempt you to stop will come. Um, but you must endure to the end. You must endure to the end. You must remain faithful and your reward is in heaven. Yeah. God rewards those he, that diligently, diligently seek him. He rewards all that does his work. The reward is in heaven. So remain vigilant. Do not quit. Do not stop. If he did not tell you to stop, you have no valid reason to stop. I don't care how logical it sounds. You have no reason <laughs> to stop. <laughs> that's, the, that's my two cents. No reason. <laughs> Jesus took all the excuses to the cross. We have no Amen. reason to. Amen. No excuses. No excuses. <laughs> All right, so with all hearts and minds clear, we're going to pray. Um, Father God, we thank you so much for for this episode. God, we thank you for the one-year anniversary of Create with Kendra and for the platform of Unassociated. God, I pray a special covering and blessing for Emmanuel to continue to do your work. God, I pray that you bless this company beyond his imagination. God, blow his mind. God, I pray that you resource it and allow it to grow and to glorify you. God, every person that is listening to this message, I pray that you encourage their heart, that you prompt them, God, to seek you even further and to pursue you even when it's challenging. 
God, I be thank you. We glorify you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. That is the word on the street Amen. for this week. Oh, that's a good word. If you have any questions, any topics of discussion, or even any prayer requests, head on over to www.unassociated.com slash ask Kendra. Um, or you can follow me at underscore create with Kendra Emmanuel. Where can the folks keep up with you at? Um, you can follow an associate. I'm on there every day. Um, I heard those guys are cool. Um, it's at un- underscore associate. And then my personal Instagram is I-H-E-K-E underscore E-H-E-K. That's my last name. All right, y'all. Until next week, beautiful people. Be blessed.